so first, I'm going to ask everybody in the back, come on up, even if you have to stand. Come on up. Come on, David. Come on up. I am going to get very personal with all of you. So if you could come closer, that would be great. All right. So my name, come on up. That's right. It's about armpits. We all have them. Thank you, Susan and Danielle, for this great night here. So, I am going to tell you the story of the worst date I ever had. I was born and raised in Altoona, Pennsylvania. Raise your hand if you have ever driven through Altoona. Yes, that's sad. Hands down. So, I grew up there as a very chubby Italian boy, and I was quite overweight until last night. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you the story of when I was 13 years old and uh, the worst date I ever had. So I lived in a small neighborhood in this very lower middle, lower blue collar town of Altoona, Pennsylvania. And next door to me at age 13, moved in this guy named Paul Nazarella. And I don't know if you guys remember the 1980s, but breakdancing was very in. And I still can break it down. Okay. So, Paul lived next to me. And something cool about Paul, uh, okay, I'm gonna, ask, I'm gonna ask the men some questions in here because some of you came to me tonight and told me that you remembered Husky Pants. <laughs> Raise your hand if you are a man in here in the 70s or 80s that remember gym class with shirts, no shirts. Yeah, made all of us feel really manly and healthy to run around with no shirt on. I was never a person who wanted to do that. So this neighbor of mine moved in. I was 13 years old and I wanted to be a man. And I wanted a girlfriend really badly. Paul Nazarella was six foot tall, muscles, and he always wore his shirt off break dancing or skateboarding doing whatever he did, I wanted to be more like him. But there was one thing that Paul Nazarella had that I really wanted to feel like a man. He had armpit hair. <laughs> At age 13, I came home every day and I had a little hand mirror. This is so embarrassing, I can't even believe I'm saying it, but I had a beer and a half. I took a magic marker and I would try to Oh, that means you tried it too. <laughs> okay. I did not expect this to go this way. So, the worst date I ever had, Paul said he would hook me up with a girl named Patty. Patty was visiting his, her grandfather in my neighborhood. Patty came to me one day and she said, I hear we're supposed to go on a date. Now date, it was summertime. Dating would be like hanging out on the corner of the street in my neighborhood. So this day he set up a date for Patty and myself. Patty came to me and she had a fishbowl and in that fishbowl, she had a frog named Franklin. It was a hot day in Altoona, Pennsylvania. She said, I'm going to my aunt's house, Tommy. That's what they call me in Pennsylvania. Tommy, would you please babysit my frog? And I said, sure. And I set the frog on the picnic table. And I said, hey. Some of us guys are gonna go hang out at the basketball hoop down the alley. Would you like to come? And she said, awesome, cool beans. 
Okay, maybe not all of you got that reference. So she went and did whatever, and I went home, and I thought to myself, I want to be as manly as I possibly can. So uh, my friend Paul came over, and of course he was in his shorts, and he had no shirt on with muscles. And he said, hey, I hear you're going to see Patty down at the alley. And I said, sure. I knew I could not go without a shirt. So I took one of my T-shirts, and this was really popular in the 1980s. I cut the sleeves out. And Paul said, this is how he said it, I'll see you down there. And all I could see is... It's like, I want to have armpit hair for Patty. So I got my magic marker out, and I went to town. And I, and I went, to, I just kept going. I had so much fake armpit hair, I looked more than manly. So then, he, he picked me up, we went down, and I'm feeling good. We get there to the corner where there's a basketball hoop. I don't play sports, but I thought, hey, I have armpit hair, I can play basketball. So we're there, I get close to her, and she looks at me and she says, I smell something. There's a really weird smell. And I'm like, what are you talking about? So. I'm playing basketball, and it starts to sprinkle. <laughs> My shirt is white. I am feeling so manly and so good. It is hot out, so I'm sweaty, and it's raining. And in the middle of this date, here I go to make a basket, which I don't make, and it starts to pour down rain. And before I know it, I look over and Patty's looking at me and she said, what's wrong with your armpits? <laughs> Black started to run down the sides of my shirt. My armpit hair started to leak. <laughs> I was so embarrassed that I ran down the street and I came across a guy named Jason Kotlebov, who was my nemesis that year in school because he thought I was not manly enough. He saw my armpit hair dripping down my white shirt and he said, he called me a name, I don't wanna, you can imagine what it was, and he punched me in the face. That's not that funny, Atticus. After he punched me in the face, I looked at him, and then I looked to the side, and Patty was there. And I thought, this is the time I can prove to Patty, no matter what my armpits look like, I'm a man. So I thought, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go up to my house, and watch what I'm about to do here. I'm gonna go up to my house, up the alley, and I'm gonna put on my roller skates, <laughs> and then I'm gonna kick him in the it's a family show. I'm gonna kick him there. So I said, I'm gonna meet you right back here. And Patty looked at me like, oh my God, oh my God, he's such a man. So I ran up to my house, put on my five pound roller skates, rolled, once again, just watch this, rolled down the alley. And as I'm rolling down the alley, I thought to myself, I have a plan. After I kick him in the, you know what? I'm going to just take off as fast as I can and get to my house. <laughs> so after I come to the bottom of the alley, I'm there. I don't know how to hit anything. <laughs> and I'm ready to punch him. He punches me in the side of the face. Patty's like, oh, no. And I'm there, and I, I take my right leg, and I, mm, right there. And he, Jason is down. I turn to the... I turn to go home. I can't make it up. It is the most non-manly moment of my life. Patty gets behind me and she starts to push. And I'm trying to get up the goddamn, I'm trying to get up the darn alley. I'm getting up there and she's pushing and she's like, it's okay, it's okay. And I have my wet armpits and my 
black gray t-shirt and I'm going, I'm going as fast as I can. I finally get to my yard, we run into my yard, we go into my house, I'm embarrassed, but Patty looks at me and she says, thank you. Oh my goodness, thank you. That was so brave of you. And I said, thank you, Patty. So then I look out the curtain to make sure that guy is gone. He is. And I walk her out to my yard and we sit on the picnic bench. And she looks at me and she said, I, I know I want to tell you the truth. This is actually the truth, which is a kind of a weird thing for a 13 year old girl to say. She said, I know that that was not your real armpit hair, <laughs> but I like you just the way, well, I'm not sure she said just the way you are. That sounds like a song, but she said, I like you. I kissed her. It was the first time I used my, it's a family show, my tongue. When we were done, she pulled away. I'm here, Patty's here, Franklin's here. And she looks at me and she said, thank you so much for taking care of Franklin was at the bottom of the bowl. Although it rained, it was like 90 degrees, and he fried on the top of his rock. Uh huh. She took the bowl. She said, I never want to talk to you ever again. And she ran back to her grandparents' house. And I sat there and I cried. But my mom came out the door, she sat beside me, and she looked at me and she said, did you have a rough day? <laughs> no. So I said, yes, I did. And she scooted a little closer to me and she said, you might not, gr you might not grow your armpit hair or your pubic hair until you're 16. <laughs> that doesn't make you not a man. And in that moment, I knew that I knew what manhood was. And since then, I did grow some. <laughs> and uh, that's the end of the story, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs>